so hi guys as you all know that who fifth edition has come up i know there are a lot of doubts in your mind what all changes have been done so because the new edition has come up and it has come with lots and lots of changes you can expect lot of questions which will be coming in your exam uh, definitely in your neat ss even in your inict exams definitely you can expect lots and lots of questions to come from this part of hematology definitely so let's have a short quiz to know how updated are you about the who new edition okay guys so let's come to the fifth edition questions let's see how much do you know how much updated you are so question number 1 on your screen okay which of the following is added as a mpn okay that is a myeloproliferative neoplasm in who fifth edition so options are on your screen so what do you think is the answer think of your answer in your mind and tell me okay so the answer to this question guys is jmml okay so the answer to this question is jmml so this is very strange you know when we talk about chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm we already know that we have cml okay we have polycythemia vera we have essential thrombocytosis we have primary myelofibrosis as predominant categories in mpn okay apart from that chronic eosinophilic leukemia is also an mpn apart from that the recently that thing that entity that has been added is juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia this is very 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 important update that you should remember please remember earlier CMML that is chronic myelomonocytic leukemia and juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia were both put up in the category of MPN MDS okay so that is an hybrid entity but now JMML has been removed from that list and added as a MPN so that's the first and the most important update in the myeloid classification that all of you should remember never forget this answer so from now jmml is a myeloproliferative neoplasm very important and tentative question to be which can be asked in your exams okay coming to the question number 2 which is not a marker of mast cell second important question yes who's going to answer that question now not a marker of mast cells so marker of mast cell i remember it has been asked in inict so many times isn't it guys so i i know all of you know that cd117 okay so starting with the basic stain first okay so toluidin blue is the simplest stain to identify mast cells you all know that and i know all of you know that this this is uh, this is positive for cd117 and tryptase is positive and all of you know that ckit is also a marker which is present okay it's a mutation which is present in mastocytosis so again according to the recent who classification which is the new marker that has been added in mast cells who's going to tell me that mast cell cancers okay ma neoplastic mast cells specially express this marker who's going to tell me this answer now so if you've thought correctly the answer is cd30 okay so cd30 is a marker which is added okay so cd30 is a new mast cell marker okay so remember that so this is a mast cell marker you have to remember this this is the recent update of new who classification especially neoplastic mast cells are known to express cd30 okay whereas cd303 is not a marker of mast cells so cd303 is what it is a marker for plasma cytoid dendritic cells okay so it is a marker for plasma cytoid dendritic cells okay so cd303 is a dendritic cell okay so this is actually a plasma cytoid dendritic cell marker and it is not a mast cell markers where a cd117 tryptase and cd30 are all mast cell markers remember so here goes another question which they can ask you so who is going to tell me cd30 positive tumors quickly who is going to tell me cd30 positive tumors so hodgkins lymphoma very good hodgkins lymphoma that everybody should know hodgkins lymphoma anaplastic large cell lymphoma anaplastic large cell lymphoma embryonal carcinomas okay embryonal carcinomas okay of testis or female genital system 
and apart from that the recent entity that has been added and you should not forget is neoplastic mast cells so neoplastic mast cells are also cd30 positive so these are the new cd30 markers that has been added and all of you should be knowing it okay right coming to the third question okay again according to the new who classification that's the third very important question splenic b cell lymphoma with prominent nuclei is uh, entity that has been added in the new who classification so it includes all of the following except okay so splenic b cell lymphoma with prominent nuclei is one of the entity that was added you know to encompass uh, minor categories like hairy cell leukemia variant and b pro lymphocytic leukemias so b pro lymphocytic leukemia and uh, hairy cell leukemia variants are no more the entities now okay so they have been added in a new category called as splenic b cell lymphoma with prominent nuclei okay whereas hairy cell leukemia is a persistent entity it is a persistent entity it is still there okay so remember everybody so somebody asks you that splenic b cell lymphoma with prominent nuclei include all of the following except so it's hairy cell leukemia hairy cell leukemia still exists whereas uh, hairy cell leukemia variant and b pro lymphocytic leukemia has been added in splenic b cell lymphoma with prominent nuclei category everybody clear with this so that's another recent update that you have to remember okay coming to the recent update let's come to the old classification old simple marker which is a very uh, it was again an inict question which came which is a very very easy question but here is it which is not a marker of nk cells so which is not a marker of nk cells so guys you should all remember this that cd16 and cd56 i know all of you know that that's a marker of nk cells everybody knows that isn't it CD uh, and uh, CD ninety four is also a marker of NK cells that also you all know. Apart from that, if somebody gives you CD fifty seven, that's also a marker of NK cells. CD two can also be used to identify NK cells, but NK cells are not positive for surface CD three. Remember this point always. NK cells are not possible positive for surface CD three. CD three is a pan T cell marker. Okay, and NK cells are natural killer cells, so they will never express surface CD3. Okay, always remember that. Okay, that's a very very important point. So surface CD3 is not positive in NK cells. Always remember that. Okay, so if NK cells start expressing CD3, then they become a special subset of cells in our body. These cells are called NK T cells. So NK T cells are different category of cells altogether. So remember, for all practical purposes, NK cells do not express surface CD3. Whereas CD16, 56, uh, CD57, uh, CD94, all are the markers of NK cells, which you should remember. Now let's come to this. Okay, so this is again a very simple question which all undergraduates and all the post uh, fresh postgraduates should know. Although majority of the places in our country, the culture okay has been now five part or six part cultures, but. Coulter is one instrument which everybody should know now. It's a simple, very basic instrument to count the number of cells in your body, WBCs, RBCs, and platelets. And so the first, uh, so very primitive, earlier type, um, or uh, some of the uh, small towns still have. Okay, some of the uh, uh, so places where this type of coulter is present. Okay, so these are called three-part coulters. So three part coulters are those coulters which can separate the uh, uh, WBCs into three major parts okay three major subtypes okay so uh, whenever we talk about a coulter it's a machine which counts WBC RBCs and platelets and there can be errors in every one of them so they give graphs so this is called WBC graph this is an RBC graph okay and this is a platelet graph okay so whenever we talk about three part coulter that means this coulter divides the wbcs into three parts into three parts okay so let me give a better image of it so this is called wbc histogram which basically divides the so which basically divides wbc into three major parts okay so if we talk about this 
Okay, so we have an x-axis and y-axis and, and normally what does a culture do? So basically it lyses the membranes of the uh, WBCs and just uh, the nucleus remains and it you know enumerates the size of it and the smallest size here is of lymphocyte. Okay, so smallest size that comes here is of lymphocyte. So that's the first wave that comes. Okay, then there are mixed cells which come in the center. Mixed cell includes monocytes, your eosinophils or basophils all the other types of cells comes here and neutrophil which is you know segmented cell comes in the biggest list here so the third category so we have lymphocyte which is first population the second trough here second uh, here is a mixed population and the third one is the neutrophil okay that was what a uh, three view part used uh, uh, culta used to give now the recent cultas give everything they separate neutrophils eosinophils basophil monocyte everything separates but this is a basic machine, three-part culture. So normally, you know, mixed cells are always less. Predominant cell in our body is always neutrophil, okay? Depending on the age, obviously, if I talk about child, child has more of lymphocyte. Whereas when we talk about adult, the predominant cell in a normal adult is your neutrophil, okay? So neutrophils usually account for approximately, you know, 40 to 70 percent. So, uh, so usually when I look at the graph, normal graph, whenever you look at the normal three-part culture, you will be seeing like this. So, there will be lymphocyte, there will be small population of mixed and there will be a big population of neutrophils. So, usually neutrophils will be more. So, here is a patient in which it's opposite. Can you look at here? The mixed population is more. So, this is the question. You have a big mixed population and you are asked to identify uh, so, what is the problem with the WBC histogram? So, you can say the mixed population is high and you need to see the smear. So, they have shown you the smear also here because they want you to answer. So, they have shown you the smear also and they have asked you the answer. So, all of you can identify these bilobed spectacle shaped nuclei with, with red granules. This is an eosinophil. So, obviously, this patient has an eosinophilia. So, see here WBC count is raised here, you can see and the mixed population is increased and the cells in the mixed population which are increased in eosinophils. So, this patient usually has eosinophilia. If you still want to confirm, increase the size, see look at the mixed cells which are actually increased. So, this is basically a eosinophilia, right? So, this is a simple Coulter graph of three-part Coulter which they have shown you with this smear and you should be able to answer this as eosinophilia, right? So that's a short quiz for today, enough for the YouTube session, I think. I hope all of you will be able to learn something from this small quiz and do tell me if you like it because if you like it, do subscribe the channel and uh, if, if your number of likes are more, we can always plan more such quizzes. Bye guys.